This video covers identification in two-stage least squares models. At the end of this video, you should be able to determine whether an instrumental variables model is under-identified, over-identified, or exactly identified, and identify the effects of under-identification, over-identification, and exact identification on the ability to estimate the model. So as a brief review to two-stage least squares introduced in another video, uh, suppose that we would like to find the causal effect of x on y, but we have a concern that our independent variable x is endogenous. That will make the OLS estimate of beta 1 uh, biased, and so uh, we would like to find an instrument z for x. We estimate uh, a first stage where we regress the endogenous independent variable on the instrument z. And then we estimate a second stage where we replace the endogenous independent variable x with its predicted value x hat from the first stage. And we showed in the previous video that this would uh, correct the bias as long as uh, z is a valid instrument for x. Uh, but it does leave a few questions. Uh, so first, what if we have more than one endogenous variable? Uh, and second, what if we have more than one instrument? Uh, in uh, what cases should we be concerned, uh, and in which cases uh, is it okay to have uh, more than one of these? Uh, so we'll answer that question shortly, uh, but to, to do that, we'll introduce a series of definitions all related to an idea called identification. First, we say that a model is exactly identified if the number of exogenous instruments is equal to the number of endogenous independent variables. A model is under-identified if the number of exogenous instruments is less than the number of endogenous independent variables. And a model is over-identified if the number of exogenous instruments is greater than the number of endogenous independent variables. So in previous videos, we have seen examples of exactly identified models where we've had a single instrument and a single endogenous independent variable. And we also know that we have not had any problems estimating those models and so there should be no concern about models that are exactly identified. We have not yet tried to estimate a model which is under-identified, but we would actually run into a problem here. If we do have fewer exogenous instruments than endogenous independent variables, then we should find that it is not possible to estimate the model. When you see the definition of over-identified, that may raise a concern. Uh, however, it turns out that having more exogenous instruments than endogenous independent variables is actually not a problem, and the two-stage least squares process uh, works fine. It is still possible to estimate that model. So in summary, if we would like to be able to estimate the model, then we need at least as many exogenous instruments as we have endogenous independent variables. So we'll go through some examples where we uh, discuss these uh, definitions and also try to get a better understanding of why under-identification in particular is a problem. Uh, so let's repeat an example that we have uh, looked at before where the dependent variable is demand for cars. The independent variable is the price of a car. And since the price of a car is potentially endogenous, we have an instrument for it, which is the price of steel. So in this model, which we've seen a couple of times already, we have one exogenous instrument and one endogenous independent variable. Those two numbers are the same. And so this model is exactly identified. And because it's exactly identified, we should have no issue estimating that model using the two-stage least squares process. Now suppose that we add a second endogenous uh, uh, independent variable. So let's say that x2 is the price of a bicycle. So perhaps we are interested in uh, knowing how some substitute means of transportation also affects car demand. Uh, well, if we still have a single instrument, but now we have two endogenous independent variables, we have uh, fewer instruments than we have endogenous variables, and so this model is under-identified. 
and because it's underidentified, it will not be possible to estimate this model. Uh, it's important to note that uh, this uh, underidentification problem is distinct from uh, the two conditions for a valid instrument. So it could be the case that steel price is a valid instrument for both car price and bicycle price. So for example, it could be the case that steel price both predicts bicycle prices and it does not have a direct impact on car demand. Uh, however, we still cannot use that one valid instrument uh, for two endogenous independent variables. Uh, we will go through an, uh, a discussion uh, of why that is shortly. Uh, however, let's suppose that we add a second instrument. So perhaps Z2, for example, is the price of aluminum. So perhaps that's another input into uh, either cars or, or bicycles. Well, we now have two instruments and two endogenous independent variables, so we are once again exactly identified. And because we have exact identification, it should uh, once again be possible to estimate uh, this model. So to get a better understanding of uh, why we had a problem in the, the under-identified situation where we had a single instrument and two endogenous independent variables, uh, let's consider the following. So uh, this chart illustrates the two-stage least squares process uh, where we have uh, one instrument, uh, Z, uh, which perhaps re represents uh, steel price, and we could certainly estimate the first stages. We could uh, regress the price of a car on the price of steel and use that first stage to obtain X1 hat, the predicted price of a car. We could do the same thing with X2 to get the uh, predicted price of a bicycle. So what's the problem with uh, using those predicted uh, prices of a car and prices of a bicycle to estimate the second stage. Well, note that uh, both x1 hat and x2 hat, because they are predictions, uh, they are both linear functions of the instrument z, steel price. Because they're both linear functions of the same uh, variable, they are also linear functions of one another. You may recall uh, an issue where any time a model, in this case the second stage, has uh, two or more independent variables that have a perfect linear relationship, we run into a problem called perfect multicollinearity, and that perfect multicollinearity prevents us from estimating the model. Uh, as a brief reminder why, uh, it would be impossible to increase the predicted price of a car while holding constant the predicted price of a bicycle because both of those uh, predicted prices are functions of the price of steel. So to fix this problem and to return to exact identification, we could find a second instrumental variable. Uh, so we had proposed before uh, that perhaps the uh, price of steel could be used to predict the price of a car. Uh, perhaps the price of aluminum could be used to predict the, uh, the price of a bicycle. Um, we might think this uh, because of the, uh, the different inputs that go into making a car and making a bicycle. Uh, so our intuition uh, may suggest uh, uh, the instruments that we might choose corresponding to each of the endogenous independent variables. Uh, however, if you return to the video on two-stage least squares, uh, you will see that in the first stage, we actually include all instruments uh, on the right-hand side of that equation, and so we would use both the price of aluminum and the price of steel to predict both the price of a uh, car and the price of a bicycle. Um, despite this additional complication, um, we are still able to estimate the second stage. Uh, the reason is that uh, at this point, x1 hat and x2 hat, the predicted prices of a car and the predicted prices of a, a bicycle, uh, no longer have a perfect linear relationship in general because we are now using two different instruments to predict those prices.